Good morning, everyone. This is Todd Sumney, the Chief Industry Officer for HomeSmart International, and welcome to today's segment of the Real Estate Podcast, another episode. And it's another episode today with a top producer, a top producing team, and a team that I have much admiration for and respect, and um, I just, I'm excited about what that team is going to share with you today. So in New Orleans, Louisiana, there is a team called the Trebus Team, and it is led by Karen Trebus, and I have Karen on the podcast here today. Good morning, Karen. Thank you for joining us. Well, good morning, Todd. Thank you for reaching out. I appreciate this time, and um, would love to share anything that you would like, um, obviously, to give other realtors information that maybe they can assimilate into their plan. I love it. Well, thank you for that. Uh, let's start real quick with uh, tell me a little bit about your team and about your makeup um, of your team. How many team members do you have and what do they do? Do they have defined roles? Do they? Let's talk about your team makeup. Okay. So, um, fortunately, I have two team members. Um, right now, my son, uh, Richard Persino, works with me, and I have Arlene Lutano, and she works with me. Um, Richard has been with me for about five years. He primarily works with buyers. He does bring in listings um, through his sphere or um, from a lead that may need to sell properties, and then we... Uh, end up working together on that. I also have Arlene Makata. She's been with me for three years. Um, And she, fortunately, she does speak Spanish. Um, So um, she works with um, a lot of our clients that do speak Spanish, obviously other clients. And I have to tell you, I'm so blessed. Um, They're both top producers. Um, They know exactly what they're doing. And the good thing, as our team, if if one of us is not available, uh, we each step in um, seamlessly to help anyone else. So if one of our agents is on vacation or they need to go to inspections, because we do attend all of our inspections, both on the buy-in side and on the listing side, Um, One of us is always available, and that's the uniqueness for our team. Um, We approach our team more like a family. Um, We're very fortunate. We do have another agent um, that is going to be taking her test. Um, So our team is growing, and that's what I do love about HomeSmart. Um, With most brokerages, being with a big box brokerage, I did not find that they allowed teams in a financial way um, that would allow an agent to facilitate growing their team. Right. Well, and I've met both of those of your team members and words that come to mind for me are professional, uh, talented, service oriented, just uh, great agents that love to take care of customers and knowledgeable. So it's no, that your team and you are doing so well. So that's awesome. Let's talk. Let's let's back up for a minute. Um, How many years have you been a licensed realtor? I have been in the business for 14 years. Um, This March, I did uh, get my broker's license. So I am an associate broker. Okay. And um, what brought you into real estate? What made you want to make real estate your profession? So even as um, someone in my 20s, I knew that I wanted to be in real estate, um, but was not in a financial position to do so, being that I was teaching. um, And then from that point, I went into pharmaceuticals. I did that for 20 years and was a manager traveling to states. And then when I got laid off, um, which quite frankly was a blessing because I was gone three days a week, um, I was able to revisit the dream that I always had when I was in my 20s um, to start my real estate career. 
Um, and I've never looked back. I love it. Um, it it's financially rewarding, um, spiritually rewarding, and we do love our clients, and we approach it from a consultant uh, standpoint, not necessarily from just a sales standpoint. We're right. the agent for, during, and after. So how was your year one? What was your what did your year one look like, and how did you get your business off the ground? So that's very unique. Thank you for asking me the question. <laughs> so, um, if you asked me how many I sold that first year, I would not even be able to tell you. Uh, I don't think it was a, a remarkable year. Um, I started with a big box brokerage, and uh, we did the telephone calls, and it was kind of crazy here because it was right after Katrina. People still came in the office. Um, so I really didn't have a plan how to get my business, quite frankly, and nobody told me I needed to have a plan. Um, <laughs> I had a lot of stumbling blocks. Um, nobody really told me about my sphere and how to cultivate that. So I would say Probably the first three years, I was a fish out of water uh, because I really didn't know what I was doing. Right. So that leads me, one of my favorite questions that I like to ask when I'm with someone like you is, what is it that you wish someone would have told you early on that you needed to learn on your own, that you're like, I wish someone would have told me this earlier? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So I can tell you, looking back, um, and, I, and I coach all of my agents on this, having a database, staying in touch. Um, if you have associations or a, a BNI group, um, in New Orleans we're very high school-centric, so if you if you can get a hold of um, a reunion um you know, book whereby you can put addresses and 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 start building a contact base because I did not do that. Um, right. So that was the game changer for me. And you know, reaching out and staying in touch with whomever I had sold a house or ran into, or um, and of course, social media back then was not what it is now. That's right. another um, caveat that, you know, people can certainly use to their advantage. So fast forward to today, um, mm -hmm. to today, you, um, how much of your business, where does your business come from today? So a lot of my business is repeat business, referral business, fear business, um, and also new business. So the, the new business segment, I would say, say is probably 30 percent um the fear business is going to be about 50 percent and um you know best clients world business is going to be so you know the remainder right so um all right, so let's go back. Let's go back. Database, database. How did you? When did you start it? What year was it that you started um, your database? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I started in year my three. Year. I probably started it in my sixth year. Okay. I, I don't think I was very diligently doing it, and once I got the contacts in there, I, I struggled with how to keep in contact with them monthly. Mm -hmm. Um. Until, you know, after doing much research and um, figuring out what I wanted to do with them, eventually I do a quarterly mail out, um, okay. usually, you know, a postcard or something of that sort. And then, um, you know, I, I do follow social media, I'm always wishing, you know, everybody happy birthday. Um, not necessarily in their timeline, but doing it in a private message. Right. Yep. So. Um, and I'm sorry, go ahead. So, well, I'm just saying back to the postcard. So when you're doing a postcard, you're doing a quarterly mailer. Are we talking mm -hmm. 300 people? 
Are we talking 2,000 people? So I have a couple of different uh, database groups. Uh, one is my past clients, um, and most of those are about 600. I know I probably have more, um, but we – so definitely my past clients. And then um, what I have done in the past, um, some of the girls – because I went to a, a, a public girls' school – um, I, I mail out recipe cards, and I, I know a lot of agents are very opposed to that um, because we're not recipe people. But believe it or not, when we get together, they'll always say, oh, I've got your recipe card. I've got your recipe card. And I've had a lot of um, those people reach out to me to help list their house or their son or their daughter or their mother. So... You know, that helps me stay in contact with them, but it, it helps me grow my business. Well, and I know um, the food down in New Orleans, so I know those rest. I know you can cook, so those recipes right, have to be right. good. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. That's great. So, um, okay, so do you use software for this database? Do you use Excel? Do you use your phone? Do you sync everything? Do you use a CRM, like um, you know, a drip CRM I, that emails people, or what What do you do? I don't use a drip um, campaign. I do have those in place that, um, that if I decided to use it, I do mail out. Um, sometimes it's a little magazine. Uh, it's the personal marketing company. I set it up on a quarterly basis. They tap into my database. Um, which I have a list through the, that I upload to them, and right. it gets mailed out to all of my clients in that database, which I think at this point is about 400, and that's on a quarterly basis. Okay. All right. Uh, so we've mentioned social media a couple times. <laughs> um, you know, uh, social media is so powerful now, and it didn't used to be the case, Right. So how did you get into social media? How did you get started? Like You know, you know like everyone else, I think we just kind of stumbled and tripped into it. Um, and unbeknownst to me, in 2018, um, I, I, I got a message. Well, actually, I got a message from my son. Um, and, and the message from him was, congratulations, Mom, you're number one in social media. Or you're number one. I said, well, thank you. You're number one, too. He goes, no, you were recognized as the number one social media agent in all of New Orleans uh, for 2018. And, <laughs> yeah, and that was from posting. And, of course, I kept waiting for whoever recognized me to call me to sell me something, and they didn't. And that was through uh, Property Spark. Um, right. But, you know, uh, what I attempt to do on the social media, obviously, um, talk about my agents and what they're doing, and they do a phenomenal job. They do videos. Um, we don't always have real estate-related items, but we stay in touch and, and trying to keep it as personal as you can, not just going through and liking everything, but having a personal comment with people that are posting to show them that you really do look at their posts and you really do care about them. Right. Well, I do think that your team does a great job of that. And it's um, a combination of family, personal, supporting local businesses and restaurants. Like Arlene, she act often she'll be sub uh, uh, doing a post about, a restaurant or a local boutique that, you know, is where she bought a dress or something like that. And it just gives me a feeling of community. And I feel like I know so much of our, about her, just the type of person she is just from her social media. And then every now and then she'll sprinkle in real estate. Right. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. a combination of all of that. And that's, what's impressive. Yeah. She does a phenomenal job. I mean, she could almost be a food critic with all the restaurants that she uh, goes <laughs> well, to. So. Especially right now in this, um, you know, pandemic time that we're in, 
the support to those local businesses means so much, right? It, it really, really does. Um, and it's interesting that you bring that up because I was just, and I just posted this morning, I, and, and I, and I'm sure there's a lot of realtors, um, I'm really missing all the networking events that we used to attend. Right. Um, and I, I, and, and sometimes it was, it was awesome. Sometimes it was, oh, my goodness, I have to attend this. But <laughs> yeah. I think the pandemic has really put that back into perspective um, for us to have more appreciation for them. Right. Right. Well, um, okay, so your favorite tool or where you get the majority of your business from now, what's mm-hmm. going on? What's, so what's, this year what's your best seen... kept secret? <laughs> <laughs> everybody well, in New Orleans, no one in New Orleans listen, but everybody else in the rest of the country, what's okay. your best kept secret? All right, <laughs> So one of the best kept things, and actually I learned it from you, Todd, was the HomeBot AI. Um, there are, are people that I've sent stuff to that I, I don't even know if they're getting the mail. Um, but when I started putting people on the value of your home, I see people clicking into it, acknowledging it, looking at it. They may never reach out to me. Um, and then I've gone in and manually updated the value of their home, and I've texted them, hey, I saw that your home increased in value. I just updated it. Please take a look at your email and call me if you have any questions. And here's what I'm going to tell you. You and I spoke about equity in homes and, you know, People may not be going back to their jobs and they've got all this equity in their homes. Right. And we're not talking just the lower number, you know, the 200,000. We're talking some people at three and 400,000. This exactly. is an opportunity for an agent to say, hey, you've got equity in your home. I've updated your value. Take a look at it if you have any questions. And I am waiting. Well, actually, I already have people that have reached out to me. This is where you're going to get your listings from. I agree. I agree. And the other thing that is um, neat about that is that it's good news. You know, yeah. it's, it's good news when you're getting, when you're helping your customers realize how much equity they have in their home. And one thing that I learned from HomeBot is equity in homes, in real estate, is the is the biggest source of Americans, most Americans, that's their biggest source of retirement income, is the equity in their home. It's not in their 401K or their savings. It's actually the equity in their home. And so here it is, you're sharing with them good news through HomeBot, right, on a regular basis. Do they go out every month? Is that how you're doing it? They, they do go out every month. And if I, if I go in there and I see that maybe someone – um, got the email or they didn't open it, um, then I take a look at it. I evaluate what value was assigned to that. Um, right. And then I do text them, um, hey, I, I, I see your value has changed. Let me know if you have any questions about the email. And then the next thing I know, they're opening the email. And the Wall Street Journal it. recently came out with an article Um, affirming exactly what you said, that people are how quick because of the equity in their home. Yeah, what we were talking about before we started recording for everyone to listen in, we were talking about the current state of the economy, and I heard Dr. Lawrence Yoon from the National Association of Realtors. He's the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors speak, And he was talking about how for uh, the last 10 years, a a large part of the country has built up an enormous amount of equity in their home. And today, with interest rates being so low um, and, you know, us having a little bit of an inventory shortage, you know, I don't think that people realize how much equity they have in their home. And when we make them aware of it, 
sometimes that can bring new listings then into the market where someone can, wow, I can, with interest rates being so low, I can upsize, not downsize, and, you know, use some of my equity in my home to do that and keep my house payment the same. So there's some interesting things going on with our, with the state of the real estate economy right now, but it all comes down to that equity in their home. So kudos to you. That's great. Thank you. Um, thank you. How did you, how did you get started? Let's, let's, let's be real tactful on this. I told you about HomeBot and other people tell you about different things. And sometimes you hear things and you don't take action on them. So how did you actually get started? What did you, and how did you implement that into your, into your business? So, um, so how did I get started? I went back <laughs> all of my years in sales. Um, mm-hmm. You know, again, another database that maybe I didn't have in place. And I did the, the grind and the due diligence, and I put everyone in there. And um, so moving forward, uh, every time we have a closing, every time we have a sale, um, I've got a, a number of steps that I do post-closing, and one of those is putting that client into the home box uh, awesome. immediately so I don't have to, um, years from now, to do anything like that. I can track them to see if they're opening it. I've had people reach out to me to ask me um, to do an updated CMA because they weren't really sure the value was correct. Right. So um, it has allowed me to have a lot of interaction uh, with people that I may not have had interaction with since we, right. since I sold them their house. Right. That's awesome. Okay, so the, for those home smart agents that are listening, if you log into Real Smart Agent, go into the uh, uh, the panel, and on the left hand side we have our navigation bar. And then uh, go to the bottom left-hand side. It says the marketplace. Go into the agent marketplace right there, and then you can search uh, real quick for HomeBot, and HomeBot will come up. Just click on it, and then that's how you can get started with HomeBot. So uh, great. So how about other sources of obviously you're working your sphere, you're engaging as much as you can, you're doing social media, you're doing some postcards, some quarterly mm-hmm. newsletters, et cetera. Um, but what other sources? Are you doing any are you doing any lead gen like purchasing of leads? Are you uh, Well I am. I am. I do um get leads from Zillow and I get leads from Realtor. Um, okay. I do use the C R M and I have a partner lender that I work with. Um, and I'm going to tell you another little tip, particularly if, if someone lives in a, a particular neighborhood um, mm-hmm. and you have the association handbook with all of the people listed in your neighborhood, mm-hmm. go into your social media and just request to be a friend of everyone in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Oh, great. It's a great idea. That's a great idea. So... How about um, budget? Do you sit down with your team and do a little bit of a plan and maybe a plan with a budget or or not? How? So my team. Um, they Sorry to probe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so my um, – so my team does not pay for anything. They do not pay for lead gen. Um, they don't. Uh, they're not part of the, my budget process. Yes, I do have a budget, um, and you know I have to look for ways when things are slow. I do um, go in if we have leads. I see that they've not been contacted. I will send them. Hey, these are your five top leads today. Please reach out to them. I really don't micromanage my team, um, and I don't have to. Early on, yes, yes. Um, it was, yeah, they needed to, you know, make sure they were doing the things, and I did micromanage, but I don't have to do that now. Right. 
So at, at the beginning of the podcast, you were talking about how you really, one of the neat things about your team is that that you all help each other and that someone is always available, and that means great service to your customers because if someone else is tied up, one of the other team members can step in, right? How did you? How did you or why did you start to build a team? Oftentimes agents, they're – there's a single agent and they're they're busy and their business is growing and and they don't know how to start a team and or they don't start a team and what was your how did you start a team and why did you take that step Mm -hmm. great question i too did not know how to start a team but what I realized when I was starting to get 43 and 50 and 60 sales on my own, I was absolutely exhausted, did not have a quality of life, and realized there was a better way to work, not necessarily an easier way, but a better way to work. Um, and I have been through six buyer's agents. I was, you know, with another uh, company and it, they were not team centric, um, and 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 look, this is not just a commercial for HomeSmart, but I can say a hundred percent, I do feel um, HomeSmart does allow for a whole different business model that is team centric that you're not going to find anyplace else. Um, in spite of all of that, I incurred all the costs with the other brokerage, paying for everything. Um, getting buyer's agents who were not the quality that I was looking for, shifted all through them. And the best start, obviously, was when my son came on board. And from that point, it allowed me to continue to grow the team um, and making the smart move to home smart. And I know this is not the best deal for myself. But, but, even bringing, you know, both my buyer's agents over. I have a new one that's ready to go. She just has to take her test. She has a phenomenal fear, and I'm very excited about it. Right. Well, one thing that I noticed when when I was with you in New Orleans and I met your son, I noticed, too, that he he was very organized, very knowledgeable, and very tactful, and I think that in a sense he did. He had some different skill sets than you had. So he was talking to me about the database and organizing the database and some of the things that he does. That that's kind of up his alley, working on the computer and doing some of that. And so it, it seems like he has he brought some additional skill sets to the table that could allow you to do what you do best, and then he does what he does best. You know, and, and you're right, both of them, um, both Richard Christina and Arlene Rajana, they bring a very unique skill set. Um, they have upped my game on Instagram. They've upped my game on emojis. I mean, um, obviously, at one time I put five little emojis all over it. Of course, I was told that's not appropriate. Um, <laughs> right. right. Um, Zippo is the best, Um, and and so we have just an awesome communication um, and and just a learning experience, and certainly I don't know everything, and they don't, and we have surrounded ourselves with a team, and we call our vendors our team, because if we don't know anything or we, we have a lack of knowledge, we certainly will reach out to them, um, right. and they're awesome. Our team of, awesome. you know, our title attorneys, our inspectors, it, they're just awesome. Right, right. Okay, so I, just a couple more quick questions for you. Um, but I'm trying to really dig in and give people some actions they can take away. So mm-hmm. our, um, obviously at one point you brought in Richard, and mm-hmm. that, that was great. But then how, how did you meet Arlene, who's not a family member, and how mm-hmm. did that come about? So Richard uh, actually leased the property. Um, I think Arlene was looking for a rental. And in New Orleans, we're a very small community. 
and I'm not sure if he ever took the rental or it didn't work out, and um, the other agent wouldn't give her her money back, and we ended up getting her money back, and then she reached out to us um, to come into real estate, and I'll never forget, we asked her what she wanted to be, and she, the first day, and we always laugh about this, she said she wanted to be a multi-million dollar listing agent. Well, anyone that knows New Orleans, um, we're not like California. We don't have a ton of multi-million dollar properties. Um, but I, I tell you, she's second to none. And, and the way that I judge my agents, so to speak, um, I, I, I can honestly say if I was not a realtor, I would feel very comfortable working with both of them because they're exceptional. Right. I would agree. I would agree. But so I didn't know that though. So Arlene was not in the business. She was actually a customer and then yeah. asked asked to get into the business and she has done such a phenomenal job. So is Richard. Um but that's that's okay, that's a great story. And so um other agents who are listening, that's the way that you can start to build a team and now you obviously have this other buyer's agent ready to come on too. And so he was a, good for you. He, yeah, this one coming on, um, he bought my listing with another agent. Um, they liked me, so I ended up selling one of their properties they also had. And we kept in touch through time. And so now she wants to be a realtor. So she was actually a, a customer and a client. Great. All right, two final questions here. Um, one is uh, walk me through your last week or a typical day. Like sometimes agents, I think they don't realize, like they don't know what other, like how to do some of the things that they want to do. And uh-huh. you accomplish so much. So like what is a typical day like? What is it? So what, day, what is a typical it, week? Go ahead. I, I go ahead. I, I get up. I look at the hot sheet. I look at what is sold. Um, I go and I look at what leads have been looking for because through my CRM I can see what look you know what leads have looked for. I reach out to my agents. I said, hey, these guys are looking. Uh, I, I have appointments almost every day. And when I'm not working those appointments, I do do my social media every day. And, um, you know, just so are these appointments, up. are these appointments like listing appointments, buyer appointments, lunches, breakfast? What, what are they? So, there, so for, me, for my team, I handle the listings only. I do not work with buyers. So okay. I can step up and do that if my agents are not available. Some of the appointments are listing appointments, some are lunch appointments, um, some are consulting appointments, some are reaching out to other people. Um, I will, if, if this is appropriate, I'll give you a marketing tip that I've used that's been phenomenal. Um, is that okay with you, Todd? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I love it. So uh, we recognize that a lot of our people, our clients are at home and they have children and most of it, a lot of them are doing virtual schooling. So usually on a Monday, I'll reach out and I'll, and I'll text them. Hey, I know life is really hectic. Um, I was thinking I'd like to send you a pizza Thursday night at 6 p.m., uh, a pepperoni pizza. That way you will know if they don't like pepperoni. Uh, <laughs> at 6 p.m., uh, will that work for you? And they all say, awesome. So then I go to Domino's Pizza, and I'm not plugging Domino's, but I <laughs> use them because the pizzas are like nine ninety nine. Right. And I go ahead and I order it. I put the tip in, and then I say, okay, your pizza is confirmed. You then pizza rise, enjoy, and they love it. And that's engaging and realizing, you know, their life is hectic. Right. And I, I love it. Phenomenal response from that. I love that idea. There you go. 
All right. So, um, and then you do your social media. You do some of that. Um, you do your pizza rising. Uh, yeah. Anything else that you do? I do lunch appoint. I mean, I do lunch appointments. Hey, you want to have coffee? Um, and you know, before the pandemic, I would do uh, drinks on the patio or apples on my patio. Um, right. And prior to the pandemic, I always every year had at least one to two client appreciation uh, parties. Great. Okay, so my last question, it's actually mm-hmm. twofold. What mistakes have you made and what are your biggest successes? Okay, so um, I think the biggest mistake was um, not following up after a closing, um, not developing the database, not um, staying in touch with my buyers because I was only really, I didn't want to be a listing agent when I started. All I wanted to do was deal with buyers. Um, I think my first experience and as a temp for a listing was just horrific. Um, and so I just wanted to stay in the buyer lane and, you know, that was the biggest mistake, um, you know, not to get back up on that horse and move forward. Um, and, and so that took a lot of um, guts to get back on that horse to say, okay, I'm ready to be a listing agent. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do both buyers and sellers. And then, obviously, my business took off at that point. Great. That's a great that's a great lesson learned. So, biggest successes. Um, the successes are, you know, we are recognized, myself and my team, as one of the top producing teams. I will tell you, um, I'm on every purchase agreement. So, for example, or the Darlene Rotano, Black, Karen Trevis. Um, we have a lot of credibility. And we have won um, offers for our buyers just based on the fact that um, the listing agent would say, well, I see you work with Karen Trevis. Um, she's going to make sure this happens. So, you know, that means a lot to have credibility um, with the colleagues. And I will tell you, the colleagues, you really need to have a relationship with them. Um, there are some great agents out in the business that really know what they're doing, but people don't like to do business with them because they're so difficult. Um, and if they would at least establish relationships with other agents, um, I, I could see their business booming. So it's not certainly to say that you should be a pushover when it comes to business, but it right. is saying that you need to have a relationship with agents from different brokerages throughout your your area. Right. Those are great uh, and, and wise bits of information. So thank you for sharing those. Yeah, so uh, any, any parting thoughts here? You have an audience of realtors around the country listening to you. Uh, parting thoughts for them. And then I actually, I have an idea for you. I wanted to run past you, but go ahead with, what parting thoughts do you have? Don't give up. Just don't give up. First of all, um, you are always welcome. I will take your call. I'll coach you. I'll, I'll probably give you more information uh, on a personal level. I will certainly be willing to share with you more um, more of the intricacies of what I do. Um, you know, don't let that buyer kick you to the curb where you don't want to do this business anymore and don't let that seller kick you to the curb. Start working your business like it's a business um, and maintain the personal level and make yourself likable. Right. Awesome. Hey, we can't uh, do this podcast so without talking about your awesome broker, Vicki, in New Orleans. It's just so amazing and, you know, uh, what do you think about Vicky and how how has she helped you? I love Vicky. Um, Vicky always has my back. She's always available. 
um, will take my calls, and um, she really recognizes, um, and that's something I like. She recognizes what myself and my team bring to the business, um, and and she will reach out to me just like I reached out to other people, you know, in terms of wanting my opinion on something. And and people like that. Um, you know, Vicky was part of the reason that I did change and decided to, you know, come over to HomeSmart, and she's not disappointed me at all. That's great. That's great. All right, so here I have an idea for you. Um, and want to know if maybe you can talk Richard and Arlene into trying this or maybe you um, doing this. Um, okay, so I was on a podcast recently, and we were talking about all the equity that people have in their home and the low inventory markets that we're all in. And one of the speakers on the call talked about, and I actually heard this about this one agent doing this from two different sources. And they said that an agent started something called the 90-day challenge. And what he did is he was going to do two CMAs a day for 90 days and and send them to clients. And what he does is he goes to Google Earth and he does a little satellite view of their neighborhood and circles their home or highlights their home. And then he puts little price sale prices on the homes that have sold around that home and sends it to them, the homeowner, and says, look, I just did a, a, a CMA on your home, and you might not know, but your home is worth this much money. Recently, homes in your neighborhood, this home sold for this much, this home sold for this much. And the listing appointments that have come out of doing that, out of 180 appointments or 180 CMAs, his – I think the number they said was over $13 million of real estate business. They came out of him just doing that. And I thought, that's a great idea. And I was talking to another agent the other day, and they said, I'm going to try it. And they immediately started to get some results. So I don't know. What do you think? You think you can try it for 30 days and do, and even if you just did one a day, right? One CMA day, send it to somebody, right? So absolutely. If you're, now, did he physically mail these, or did he, or she? So what he, he would he do th- uh, three things. Um, he would uh, uh, email them the actual the satellite view with the CMA and you know the information. So he would email it, but he would do a bomb bomb video that actually then said, "Hey, I just sent you an email a moment ago." And this is why he would just talk to them. So it was a twofold with come, and then thirdly, he would try to go get an appointment to drop off a hand copy, and go actually okay. do a do a CMA. So, but it was a it was email, then a bomb bomb video, and then try to get an appointment with them. And but said so I guess the majority of the time people were calling him wanting to meet. <laughs> that so, is awesome. So yeah, so if you if you if you try it, if you do that, um, circle back with me and let me know in 30 days. Like if you tried 30 CMAs, what was your ratio? What what did it result exactly. in? Exactly. I All love right? it. I love it. Thank you, Todd. I appreciate awesome. that. Awesome. Please well, let I, anyone know if they want to call me there or email me, they're more than welcome to do so. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Let's get your email address and your mobile phone, and if you have any clients that need to buy real estate in New Orleans, I'm sure that Karen and her team can take great care of you. So give them all your info. Um, So my cell phone is 504-352-7700. My email address is K-T-R-E, B as in boy, E as in Edward, S as in Sam, the number two at yahoo.com. So that is kprevis2 at yahoo.com. And what's your Instagram? kprevis2. Okay. And Facebook? Facebook is Karen Trevis, and I do have a business page, 
New Orleans living with Karen Trimble. New Orleans living. All right. With Karen Trimble. Okay. All right. Well, hey, um, thank you so much for doing this today. I know that was a little bit of time, but I love hearing your story, and um, I love uh, all the little tidbits and tactics that you've shared today with all the agents, so I hope they put them to use and get some great results. So thank you, Karen, for being with us today. Well, thank you. It was such an honor, and um, I wish everybody much, much success. Awesome. Well, there you have it, everyone. That's today's episode of the Real Estate Podcast. I'm Todd Sumney, the Chief Industry Officer for HomeSmart International, and thank you for joining us, and we'll see you back on future episodes of the Real Estate. Like what you're hearing on the Real Estate? Tell your friends about us. Tell them to check out all of our episodes on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. And don't forget to send any topics you want us to tackle to the Real Estate at homesmart.com.